Again, it's great to have you with us for evening prayer tonight at St. Peter. We are gathered this evening in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we approach the mystery of God, let us come in confession, trusting the love of Christ, crucified and risen. God, who searches us and knows us, you have shown us what is good but we have looked to other lights to find our way. We have not been just in our dealings with others. We have chosen revenge over mercy. We have promoted ourselves instead of walking humbly with you. With what shall we come before you? Forgive us our sin and show us your salvation. In the face of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Beloved of God, you have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, poured out for you in the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. Receive the promise of baptism. You are God's child. Your sins are forgiven. Rejoice and be glad, for yours is the reign of heaven. Amen. For you as incense. Let my prayer rise before you as incense. The lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. O Lord, I call to you. Come to me quickly. Hear Let my voice, voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer rise before you as incense. The lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a watch before my mouth, O Lord. And guard the door of my lips. Let not my heart incline to any evil thing. Let me not be occupied in wicked with evildoers. Turn my eyes to you, O Lord. In you I take refuge. Strip me not of my life. Glory to the Father, Glory. and, and to, to the Son, and to, and to the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, it as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Let, let the incense of our repentant prayer ascend before you, O Lord. And let your loving kindness descend upon us that with purified minds we may sing your praises with the church on earth and the whole heavenly host and may glorify you forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Acts 2, 14a, 36-41. to 41. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah. This Jesus, whom you crucified. Now, when they heard this, 
they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. As he, testify, as he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter, beginning with the 13th verse. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. They urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem and they found the 11 and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. And they told what had happened on the road and how he had been known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Well, thanks to our readers for sharing those good words with us. I um, appreciate your leadership this evening. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So I'm thinking tonight about those moments, and I know that you've all had them a time or two in your life, when, when we look back on an experience or a time 
in our lives and are able to see from the vantage of the future, you know, what we were not able to see when we were found ourselves in the midst of the experience. Maybe it was the, the value of a trusted friend or a, a beloved family member. Maybe it was an obvious truth that you didn't see at the time, but now looking back on with some perspective, you can actually see it. Or maybe, maybe there's been times in your life when the hand of God has really been a part of your journey in a way that wasn't especially apparent in the moment. But after all was said and done, it seemed so much more clearer than it was at the time. I'm old enough to be thinking of Joni Mitchell, right? <laughs> don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you've got till it's gone? Uh, those times when we look back and see what perhaps we didn't fully appreciate in the moment, but uh, that we remember with great uh, as a great blessing and a great treasure in our lives. I suspect that's part of what happens with Cleopas and, and his traveling friend. I find this to be just the most fascinating story. Uh, you know, it's it's Easter Sunday, and there's been some reports from the tomb. Uh, we're not quite sure. Maybe Cleopas or his friend had actually been among those who made their way to the tomb that morning. Uh, but they didn't walk away overwhelmed with the promise of the resurrection. Uh, they, they walked away from that bewildered and confused. And, and as, as they're described by Luke, there's a great sadness, almost a despair that's hanging over Cleopas and his traveling companion. And so, so what they decide to do is they decide to leave town. And so they make their way from Jerusalem to Emmaus. It's about seven miles. It's a long walk, a long, hot, dreary, sad walk. And somewhere along the way, uh, a fellow traveler falls in with them. And they're intrigued by this man, uh, first of all, because he doesn't seem to have any idea what was going on uh, that weekend with his initial question. But as soon as they engage him in conversation, they begin to become aware that he knows an awful lot about what's taken place in Jerusalem this past week. And, and as they walk, he begins to talk about the events of Holy Week. And he begins to relate them to what they knew from the scriptures, these messages that have been a part of their faith tradition for generation after generation. And you can imagine Cleopas and his friends, their, their intrigue growing and their interest in what this man has to say expanding to the point that by the time they get to Emmaus, and it's evening now, and they've been walking all day long and they're exhausted and they've arrived where there are somebody, there are some friends evidently who are expecting their arrival. And so they say to this stranger, the words that if you and I were gathering here tonight together, we probably would sing together, wouldn't we? Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening and the day is almost over. The refrain that's a part of our evening prayer is one that's grounded in the story of Cleopas and his friend on that first Easter Sunday. And so uh, the traveler says, okay, fine, I'll come in and join you. Meal sounds pretty good. They sit down around the table and then everything changes. And with language that is deeply Eucharistic, we hear that Jesus took the bread and broke the bread and blessed the bread and distributed the bread. And all of a sudden, Cleopas and his friend realize what's been taking place all day long. All of a sudden, this whole experience, this long day's walk from Jerusalem to Emmaus takes a complete different shape. And they realize that this was not a stranger at all, but a very intimate friend. They realize it was not someone who was sort of paying attention to the events in Jerusalem, but it was one who was very personally involved. And their eyes were opened to what they couldn't see all that afternoon. And they remark to each other, and I think one of the phrases that I enjoy the most in this text is when they say, were not our hearts burning as he opened to us the scriptures along the road. You know, we're talking about this story at Bible study today. And uh, uh, if you're free during the week, if your schedules are more flexible now than they tend to be when you're running off to the office somewhere. You got to come by and join us for this. It's been such a delight, these Wednesday conversations we have. It's always about one of the lessons for the coming Sunday. And the fun part for me is that it's a group of people who are almost all my senior. And they're folks who have had long and faithful lives. And, and we talked today a little bit about how they look back on their life's journey and can see signs 
that God has accompanied them along the way, that signs that sometimes weren't as obvious in the moment as they are now as they look back. And I'm, I'm so grateful for this gathering. I, I always learn an awful lot more than they do in our times of study. But I'm also grateful for their role in our community. You know, people who have been along that journey and, and who can look back and to see in retrospect that God continues to be with us each and every day, that God continues to, to support us and encourage us and inspire us and nurture us. And, and they shared some examples today about ways that they've looked back and seen the hand of God along the way in their life's journey. And it made me wonder, <clears throat> as you and I, excuse me, <clears throat> as you and I look back on these days, you know, what kind of things will we see in the future that we're not able to see as clearly today? You know, will we be more aware of those times when God lifted us up and carried us through the, the challenge of the moment? Will, will we be more aware of, of how our faith helped us to be people who, who lived in these days with peace and hope? instead of fear and despair? Will it be times when we've sensed that it was God who was strengthening us and inspiring us and helping us through the experience that we're going through these days? I, you know, as, as we gather here tonight and as I see your faces and see the, uh, the names on my phone here of folks that are joining us through Facebook, Facebook I'm, so, I'm so thankful for this community. I'm so thankful for the ways that God is present to us and through us in this community. And, and I want to encourage you tonight to stay close to each other, to stay in touch with one another. Let the Spirit move through us in, in ways that we'll look back on these days and, and, and remember the goodness of God and the presence of God and, and the reality that we aren't forced to walk these days alone, but we walk them accompanied by one another. And as we're together, as Jesus says, Whenever two and three of us are together, so also is the presence of God. God who loves us deeply and who accompanies us on our journey, even in those times when we don't see it. But we will, as we look back on it, I'm confident that we will. And we'll give thanks uh, for the faith that sustained us and for the God who's accompanied us and for the community that has surrounded us. So I want to invite you just to take a moment with me now. And uh, in the quiet of this space, let's think about those ways that we've been aware of God's presence in the past couple of weeks. Lord God, as we walk this journey together, we are aware that we don't know uh, where it leads us, and we don't know what will confront us, but we do know your promise, your promise to be with us, your promise to strengthen and encourage us, your promise to move through this gathered community to be a source of strength and hope and peace. And for all of this, we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we enjoy you to pray with us. Let's turn our attention to the prayer of God's people for this evening. Lifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. For those whose hearts are fervent with love for your gospel, that they are empowered to tell the story of your love in their lives and to show hospitality in response to this love. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the diverse natural world, for jungles, prairies, forests, valleys, mountains, and for all the wild and endangered animals who call these spaces home, that they are nurtured and protected. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For broken systems we have inherited and that we continue to perpetuate, forgive us. Restrain the nations from fighting over limited resources. Redeem us from the cycles of scarcity and violence. God, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. For the faith-forming ministries of this church, 
for those preparing for baptism, First Communion, Confirmation, and Membership, for those who participate in Sunday School and Adult Education, guide and inspire learners of every age and ability. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we lift up to you our personal prayers and petitions, whether aloud or silently. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Create in our hearts a yearning to rest in your promise of eternal and resurrected life. Give us thankful hearts for those who have died, even as we look forward to the hope of new life with you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May Christ, the wisdom and power of God, and the source of our life together keep you united in mind and purpose. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. We are welcomed into God's love just as we are. We are sent into God's world to be a reflection of Christ. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And thanks be to you for joining us in worship tonight. So good to have you all here with us. And thanks to our worship leaders and Steve and Rick pushing all the buttons in the background to make this worship possible. It is just really a blessing to, to be with you all tonight. So thank you so much for joining us. Why don't we take a couple moments and greet one another as we get ready to leave. Facebook friends, thanks for being part of our worship tonight. Great to have you all with us as well.